Agent, it's Dr. Candle. I want to stress to you the vital importance of safeguarding any civilians you may come across. The math says some of those people must have survived the dollar flu. That means they've got antibodies to it that I need to have a hope in hell of fighting this thing. And the ones who are just sick, having a broader genetic diversity of virus samples will help us track the virus's rate of mutation, which is a long way to say, keep those people alive until I get what I need from them. Got that? Great. the cleaners are holding the entire tent. Agent, as soon as you lock the situation down, I've got a joint Sarah JTF strike force ready to move in. They'll take samples from as many refugees as they can find. Medical personnel? A couple of EMTs in the mix, Doctor? Yes. A couple? As in only two? The rest are first aid certified. They know how to tap a vein. Get going, Agent. Without contaminating the sample. Infecting themselves, yes. I'll take your word for it. Thank you. Get moving, agent. Hey guys, I'm Clint Flair Wu. Welcome back to another Division Build video, and I hope you're well in early on in this new year. So I'm bringing you a new awesome tank D3 build, which is super effective in PVE. Let's look at my 
ultimate D3 FNC build. Okay, guys, this is where you need to be at. So what we'll do, we'll talk about the gear set first, and then we'll look at the stats. So set bonus two, 15% protection from elites, set bonus three. 10% Ballistic Shield Damage Resilience, set bonus 4, is Frontline, allows using an SMG if one is equipped. When Ballistic Shield is deployed, only Master Rank Shield mod is active. Ballistic Shield Health is increased by 57% for every 3,000 Stamina. And guys, that is an extra 171% Ballistic Shield Health, which is good. I've got 9k Stamina, as you can see. You can see where I'm going with the build. 171% extra, nice. So, set bonus 5, 15% protection from elites, again, extra tankiness, and 5% ballistic shield damage resilience. And set bonus 6, now bear with me, there's a lot to go through on this. When ballistic shield is deployed, melee damage is increased by 2000%, and all overhealing the player received is applied to the ballistic shield as healing. After receiving a damage threshold from receiving physical or exotic damage the ballistic shield grants a buff to the player and all group members within 15 meters for six seconds the duration of the buff is increased by two seconds for every 3000 stamina the player has physical damage which is we obviously weapons bullets armor is increased by 30 percent exotic damage you think in grenades you think in turrets weapon damage is increased by 30 percent when at 9,000 stamina, Ballistic Shield health is increased by 200%. Really, really nice, okay? So at the top of the 171% we have on, on set bonus 4, we're getting an extra 200% on top of that, so 371% Ballistic Shield health. In order to get that bonus, though, you need to have your skill power at a minimum of 121,000. There's various ways to do that, but one of the ways I've got here is I've rolled it on all of my gear where possible, and I've used my mods for something else. You can miss out one of the one of the set rolls, or it be on your knee pads, your mask, or your backpack, and have uh, two or three mods equipped with skill power on there. But you don't have to. You can roll it the way that I rolled it. That's entirely fine. That gives me a little bit extra skill power. So that gets me 125,538, which automatically unlocks the 371% extra ballistic shield health. With anything below that 121,000, it will not unlock for you. So you have to make sure you have 121,000 skill power on your build. Without that, you won't get that buff. So make sure when you do put this together, you can see how I've done it and try and work around that to get you where you need to be and where the build needs to be to be at its most optimal. Okay? Right, that's the gear. That's the set. That's how it rolls. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the chest piece. I've got it rolled into stamina. Enemy armor damage, health, ammo capacity as the miner. I feel that enemy armor damage will give you that 6% extra uh, damage towards NPCs. This is a PvE build, so I don't need EDR. I don't really need skill haste, uh, so I do need the extra damage. And with 4k firearms, I will need that. So enemy armor damage, I think, for me is key. As well as health, ammo capacity, because you will be shooting a lot of bullets. Simple as that. Okay. In terms of the mods, I have two stamina critical hit chance mods. Now we go to the mask. The mask is rolled into stamina with skill power, damage to elites, and the mod is stamina critical hit chance. And as I said before, the key is to get three of your major attributes, two as a minimum at skill power. So I've opted for my mask to be skill power and key to the build because it's PvE content, you have to have damage elites to deal more damage. Uh, so make sure you have these equipped on your mask if you go down the route that I'm going down. Now onto the knee pads. Stamina as the mate as the, the key attribute. We're looking at skill power 
as a major and the minor shock resistance the sort resistance damage to elites now in terms of, of the, the three minors one of them is a must-have and that is damage to elites make sure you have that on your knee pads as a necessity it has to be on there the other two again it doesn't really matter you can have increased kill XP if you are farming if you want to collect more caches more field proficiency stuff then yes you could have increased kill XP if you wish uh, if not then this is fine okay as your major again I've opted for skill power again I need at least two as a minimum major attributes to be skill power I've opted for all three which we'll talk about shortly um, you don't need health it's as simple as that you're tanky enough as it is so if you do decide to opt out of uh, skill power on your knee pads I would go down the crit damage route if need be but skill power is what I've opted for and in terms of mods I've gone with again stamina critical chance and a ballistic shield damage resilience mod now onto the holster it is critical it chances the major again I don't need health or skill haste or reload speed it's critical chance I want to do more damage and ballistic shield damage resilience as the prototype performance mod onto the gloves the gloves is rolled into stamina with critical hit damage SMG damage and critical hit chance now onto the backpack, and this is the only piece which is rolled into firearms, as you can see, it's fully optimised over the armour, skill power as the major, ammo capacity as the minor, the two mods, sorry the three mods, stamina critical chance and two ballistic shield damage resilience mods. Okay, with this again, as I stated before, I've opted for skill power across the board, and that gets me exactly where I need to be. Um, ammo capacity is the minor again you are spraying a lot of bullets so it's nice to have that extra ammo on your gear okay so we'll go through the, the weapons of choice the first weapon is the house the best SMG in the game so this is what I fully recommend how to roll with you will need two talents the two talents I've opted for are deadly which will increase my critical chance of critical damage by 15% and the creme de la creme predatory now, which killing a target regenerates 35% of health over 20 seconds so as you can see I'm running 9k stamina 595,000 toughness 35% of that is a huge chunk uh, that's going to regenerate over 20 seconds and because of again you're a walking tank um, you do take damage don't get me wrong you will take damage over time but when you are constantly healing, you will keep that buff. And again, you've got the, the buff from the six piece as well. The physical damage or the exotic damage, you become exceptionally tanky. So predatory is key to this build to make sure that you survive longer. Someone will say now, but why don't you use a heal? Use a heal. You have predatory. I've opted not to. And again, I'll go through the reasoning why very shortly, but predatory on the build is key for me to survive and deal more damage over time. Okay. In terms of weapon attachments, um, we're looking at its critic chance, rate of fire, uh, critic damage, and a headshot damage where possible as well. My secondary, I do not use this, I'm afraid. This is just for show. It has deadly and destructive destructive is a, also a really good top tier option for dealing more damage however i would need to equip a first aid self heal if i had destructive active which i've opted not to okay magazine size crit chance rate of fire crit damage from stability and accuracy on there as well now if we take a look at the character sheet now my critical chance is 47 percent my crystal damage is 112%, headshot damage 62%. Now, I've opted to get my critical chance as high as I can without it rolling on my mask. Okay, and to do that, that has given me around 47% critical chance, which is nice. Critical damage 112%. However, I have got precision as a talent on my gear. One of the four talents I have is precision. That will give me 12.5% critical chance per headshot for 10 seconds. 
So there's that 10 second window where we'll, I will have 59.5% critted chance, which is close to max. And then my critted damage will be boosted by 25% for 10 seconds to 137%. So, in a nutshell, this is where you need to be at. You need to be at a place of 46 to 48% critted chance, which means you can deal some decent damage, pop a headshot, given you're behind a huge, big ass shield. You can you can hit headshots easier. You will have precision unlocked most of the time, if not all of the time. So you will have that constant 59.5%, even 60, depends how you've got yours built. But you'll have a max critical chance if you build it correctly and have precision equipped. And critic damage, again, you can just keep rising that where need be. I've opted for 112% because that is a good place to be for me and me and the build. But again, if you can get that higher, then happy days. My damage to elites is 28%, which is perfect. I have 16% on my knee pads, 12% on my mask. That's the best I can get out of this build, unless I had Ferocious. Um, unfortunately, it wouldn't be equipped, so I'm in, I'd, I'd be stuck there or any damage to elite mods. So given the way, the way the build set out, this is the best I can get equipped. And I've got 6% enemy armor damage. I'm taking a little, uh, a little bit from my chest piece. Uh, to get any more, I'd have to reroll critted damage to enemy armor damage on my gloves. I've opted not to. Um, I don't feel I need that. Okay, so you're in a good place with these two. Now onto the abilities. Now, the shield is the first ability I have. You can choose any of the free shields there that you want. That's entirely up to you. Um, personally, I've just gone for the big kinetic breaker shield. Um, that again, that is up to you. You could choose the pulse one, recon one. That is that is entirely up to you. I've just gone for that one. Simple as that. But my second ability is, or my second talent skill is flashbang. Now, flashbang is absolutely key to the build. I've got 39%, the 39 second cooldown. Using this is more beneficial than a booster shot or a revive or a first aid. This gives me enough time to take out my NPCs ahead of me. And it's key, it's absolutely key in a team environment. So having flashbang equipped and having predatory on my uh, house means I don't need a heal. Don't need a heal at all. So having the flashbang, again, this would disorient my opponents for around about five, six seconds. I'm in there. I can easily take them down. It's as simple as that. It works an absolute treat. So flashbang is the way to go. Don't go down the heal route. Go for flashbang. Again, it synergizes exceptionally well with Predatory whilst you're healing over, over 20 seconds with 35% of your health. You can deal a flashbang. Uh, again, you're in a, such a very, very good place. That's the way I would build this. Now that moves on to talents. But first, let's go through your signature skill. And for me, it's tackling. Simple as that. The chances of you going down on this build are minimal. It's just it's just as simple as that. So you don't need recovery link. Strike that. No point. Survival link. You are tanky enough. You don't need a survival link. It's again as simple as that. So there's no need for a survival link. It's all about tack link. Simple as that. Now, before I go on to the talents, one thing I do want to add is someone will ask me, so I'll get this over and dealt with now. Why am I using Ballistic uh, Shield Damage Resilience mods instead of Health? Now, I go back to the shield. It's 2350001 uh, HP. So, Health, damage, damage Resistance, what is more important? Simple as Damage Resistance. Okay. So, Damage Resistance is very, very similar to a Survival Link. And again, we'll do a, a comparison now. So, for example, uh, 2.3 million... Uh, shield health. This can be better, don't get me wrong, if I had shield mods, if I had 4 at 7.5%, that would get me an extra 30% health, which would be nice, again, about 2.5 million, should I say, that would be a very, very good place to be. However, it's all about the resistance. And we take a look at the survival link. Now, the survival link is 50% damage resistance for 
13 seconds. So you know when you get a survival link, you are exceptionally tanky for that amount of time. So when I'm running with shield, with the ballistic shield damage resilience mods, that boosts my build from 25%, which is the norm, to 45%. That is like having a survival link attached all of the time. Okay, so damage resilience covers you, covers the player, covers the shield. Ballistic shield, shield health covers the shield. So guys, when you're building this, don't go down the shield health route. Go down the damage resilience route because you need to be as tanky as possible. Whether it's PV or PVP, it doesn't matter. Damage resilience is the way to go, and that's what you need on this build. You know, don't don't get um, don't you don't look at the thought of having an extra shield health to make you tank. You make your shield tank. You want to make you tankier, and by doing that, it's shield resilience mods. That's the best advice I can give with this build. Okay, talents finally. Okay, so first talent, combat medic, and again. That heals your shield and heals your teammates, proxies, in 20 meters by 40%, which is nice to have. So combat medic is tick one. You need that on this build. On the move. I've opted for on the move, again, to make me a little bit more tankier. When you are doing legendary content, you will take damage. And you will have hunters, you will have uh, super powered elite enemies coming at you and hitting you exceptionally hard. So it's nice to have that extra bit of reduction of damage by 15%. It helps. It, it really, really does. And I have this attached. And this means you will not go down. Okay? You've got predatory, which will kick in. You have on the move, which will kick in. And it makes you very, very strong. So that's why I've opted for on the move. As discussed when looking at the character sheet, precision, this gives you more DPS, more damage. Okay, it gives you a, str a stronger a critted chance and a stronger critted damage. So why wouldn't you have this equipped? It's as simple as that. This is the one you have to have as well. This is a go-to talent for me on the build. And the last one is one is none. Now, a lot of people used to use this on a lot of builds and again because you're getting you get more bullets back in the magazine um, you can shoot for longer etc etc but you know over time people didn't went away from one is none used other talents such as uh, critical save adrenaline etc etc or, or um, strike back getting your skill cooldowns back better but this one is none on a shield build is a huge tick and again, the reason being is because you're behind a big ass shield, you're very, very slow and cumbersome. However, that means that you will hit the head more often. And if you hit the head more often, again, you might there's a 50% chance you may not consume that bullet, which puts an extra 50% bullet back in your magazine. So you can keep shooting, hence dealing more damage. So one is none is a huge tick. So these are the four talents that I would have equipped on this build. Okay, guys, this is my complete rundown of the D3 PVE set I'm rolling with. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a bit long, it's a bit in-depth than, than I usually do, but I wanted to get through this because it's highly important of how you should roll with D3 because there's been quite a bit of confusing information over the past few years, but this is the best best way in my opinion how to roll with d3 deadly predatory is a superb combo okay guys if you enjoyed this video then please drop a like if you want to see more the division content then please smash the subscribe button i'm close to 1300 subs which again is amazing and i hope to keep building and building towards that fantastic game the division 2 which we're all excited about okay then guys i'll catch you soon in skirmish last stand or even the dz Take it easy.